going on guys uh welcome to another episode of follow up wednesday this sunday was part two of the series uh titled the setup this verse was the theme of the whole message uh romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are called according to his purpose all things right all things work together for good to them that love god Romans 8 28. So that verse is very important. Not just to memorize it. It's not enough to memorize that verse. We have to own that verse. Uh, and by owning it, I mean we have to really make it a part of us. So when things hit the fan, rely back on this verse and just know deep to our bones that God's got our back. Uh, may benefit from watching Steve Jobs' uh, inauguration speech in Harvard 2015, I think it was. So he's speaking to the students about connecting the dots. He says that you cannot, and I'll link that here so you guys can watch it. He says that you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. And you just have to trust that what is going to happen or what happened will eventually link up to your favor. Well, he's talking about faith, right? And similarly with the, with this verse of faith 28, uh, uh, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things, all things work together for good to them that love God. So next time something goes south or just something that you weren't expecting, something that according to your perception is not good, get into this habit with me. Say it, proclaim it and say, it. that's good. I know your, 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 your mind is going to, it's not going to agree with you. It's going to say, how is that good? For example, I, I, I always park far. I don't like my cars getting dinged. So I, I, I park as, as far away as I can uh, when, when the distance allows from other vehicles. It did happen to me once and I didn't say that's good. But the fear is a neighboring car is going to, oh, it's going to open its door and maybe not by, by their will, but maybe the wind gushes it and, 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 and hits your car and, and puts a ding on it, right? So that's, that's what I always think about. And that's why I try to park as far away from other cars as possible because I hate things. Or let me just pick a real example. Oh, okay. I bought a truck that I shouldn't have bought. I made a bad purchase. Okay. I think we can all relate to that one. I recognize it. I correct it. And I'm not doing that anymore. I've learned from it. Okay. But when that happens or when you realize you messed up, say it. Say that's good. And look for the good in it because the good will be there. And we tend to find what we look for. Romans 8, 28. Because we know, so we have to know, again, we have to really own this. And it's not just enough to memorize it. Because we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Okay, here's the kicker, to them that love God. So if you want all things to work in your favor, you want all these dots to be connected to your favor, then you must love God right? That's the prerequisite. Pastor Robert said that. He said, you can't say you love someone when you don't know someone. So you can't say you love someone when you don't know someone. If you want all, all things to work together for your good, to them to love God. So therefore you have to, you must love God. Well, how can you say you love God when you don't know God? So that's where we have to get into the word every day. We have to know him, right? If we love him, we should naturally want to know him, right? So that 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 is what Follow Up Wednesday is about, right? It's, it's about reiterating these messages that are so powerful and are worthy of repetition because we need to get into our word, right? And start knowing God, getting into a relationship because we love him. And we know that all things work together for our good to those that love him, right? It's probably the biggest takeaway from, from uh, the message. Um, one of the questions that was brought up was, are you a new creation? Because if you are a new creation, then accepting Jesus is not a decision. Well, it is a decision, uh, but it's not a decision by itself and you're done, right? Oh, I accepted Jesus today, therefore my life is going to change. No, it doesn't work like that. It is not a decision. It's a process. Well, it starts with a decision, but that's not the end of it. That's just the beginning. It's a process every day. And, and we hear that in, in Romans 12 too, right? But the renewing of our mind, right? We constantly have to renew our mind. It's, it's a process. Renew our mind, rewire our, rewire our programming because we've been programmed to not look for the good in things, right? 
when things go south, right? When, when, when things don't go our way, what do we do? We look for the bad in it immediately by default. We look for the bad in it. And that's not what we want now. We, are, we a, are we a new creation? Are we going to start implementing these habits of something goes south? That's good. And have this attitude of expectancy. Expect the good in it. Oh, that's good. People are not, you know, they're not going to understand you and that's okay. They're going to say, this guy is cuckoo. How is that good? Dude, you, you, your car just got dinged or this just happened or you just lost your job or you just lost $100 or whatever. How is that good? You, you should be upset. You should be sad or whatever negative connotation is attached to that event. So, but not you. You're going to say, that's good and start looking for the good in it. Why? Because you know and you own this verse of eight, Romans 8, 28, that all things work for you good and you're doing your job. You're putting in your two cents by getting to know God because you love him. So you're getting to know him. How? By praying constantly and by reading the word, by really understanding the context of, in this case, Romans 8, 28. It's not enough to just know this verse. Just read the whole room and say, who, who was it written for? What, in, that, in that era, who, 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 who wrote Romans anyways? I, I'm, see, I need to get into my word. I don't even know who wrote Romans. But what was he saying to those people back then? Why was it written in what context? And what is, is the author trying to tell us, right? So that's diving in and, and, and getting different perspectives. You know, I, I like to uh, really chew on these verses and, and try to understand uh, different points of views and come up with my own conclusions. So it's, it's a wonderful thing to study the word. Okay, so he, he, he gives the analogy of going into the desert. In, in the desert, there's no food or water. So uh, it, he said that if somebody were to ask him, what's the best advice you can give me? I'm getting ready to go into the desert. He says to pack up, right? Pack up, pack up water and pack up food, pack up bread. So in, in today's language, what does packing up mean? It means read your word, get into your word. Right, man does not live by, by by bread alone. You gotta get in the word. We gotta get into our word and, and pray constantly. And um, then he brings up Genesis fifteen twenty, that in the Old Testament was the equivalent of Romans eight twenty eight. Uh, he says to use your setback to be set up. So I like that one. Use your setback to be set up. Right. So it's another word. It's another way of saying when things go south, when you have a setback. Know that all things work together for your good because you're loving Jesus, you love God, and you're putting in your two cents. Every day you're praying, every day you're seeking Him, you're, you're studying the Word, and you're understanding Him, right? You're doing your job, you're doing your part. Uh, you get a setback, you're not going to see it as a setback. You're about to be set up. You're about to learn something. You're about to let that quote-unquote setback be used to glorify who? Glorify God because He's the one that's going to get you out of this mess. Or perceive as a mess, right? You know better. You know it's not a mess. You know it's going to be an opportunity for him to glorify himself, right? For 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 a testimony, right? A setback comes your way, and you use that energy. See, when, when setbacks come my way, I use that energy because you're very emotional at that point. Something happens. You 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 go through a setback. You're very emotional, and you can't really think about anything else but this setback. So use that energy. And invest it in whatever's going on. For example, I remember when I got ripped off, I, I haven't lost money in real estate deals yet. But I did lose money with this guy who was less than honest, let's just say. And I should have known. But back then, I wasn't as smart as I am now. <laughs> and this is how you learn by messing up. This guy uh, was a crook and he, he, he stole money from me. And it was a significant amount, $20,000. So that setback that discouragement that that energy allowed me to start seeking and as a result of of feeling taken advantage of feeling discouraged feeling sad you know feeling cheated as a result of a mixture of all those feelings i started seeking i started improving myself and i started asking god how can i use this for my good, for my advantage. And I didn't even know this, this verse back then, Romans 8, 28. The reason is not enough to just memorize it because you'll forget it. Or you might just memorize it, but it's not enough. You got to own it. You, 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 you don't even stress over it because you know that all things work together for your good because you love God, right? Work, all things work together for good to them that love God. Well, I love God. Do you really? Yes. I'm putting in my two cents every day, right? I'm, I'm, I'm studying the word, right? So if you are doing that, if you 
have established the discipline to study. The point is that you have a daily commitment to study the word, right? And, and we're going to talk about that in another episode about making decisions, all right? But you have to make a decision that this is going to happen no matter what, right? Make a decision, make an appointment with yourself that you're going to read the word, right? So the way I read the word is, again, what I told you, when I get a setback, I started searching because it was very emotional, right? I, mean, I felt cheated. I felt taken advantage of. So let me search. I started reading books and, and I started reading the Bible as well. The verses that led me to other books and blogs and podcasts. And I just started consuming material that would help me realize where I went wrong. And I, and I found a lot of bad things about myself things I needed to improve on, things I needed to overcome. There were definitely um, things in my character that needed to be dealt with. I was, I was also a crook back then, and um, I deserved that. I deserved that, right? The point is that I used that setback, I used that energy to search. How can this serve me? Where did I go wrong? And, and I, I used that energy to start reading and, and listening and getting in the Word. Now, I admit, I read and I listened more than I got into the Word. Now I do the opposite, right? I, I, now I seek the truth. The truth will set you free. So I start with the Word and I let the, I let the Word guide me into other supporting authors, supporting documents. There's, there's a lot of supporting uh, mediums out there that, that, that support the message. Ultimately, the Bible is what you need, really. There's many great minds out there that are, are, are wonderful. For example, I'm reading this book. Uh, it's by Robert Russell, God Works Through Faith. And actually, this is where I wrote my notes. Um, and, and it's a wonderful book um, because what I like about that book is that it, it brings the credit back to where it belongs. It brings the credit back to God, right? We know that he, he's, there's only one God and He's the one that deserves the credit. There's a very famous book out there. Uh, it's called Think and Grow Rich. You may have heard of it. Wonderful book. And all the lessons are very true. The only thing is that uh, Napoleon Hill doesn't use the word God. He uses the word infinite intelligence, which is God. Who the heck has infinite intelligence but God? I don't know. I don't know why he kept it so general. Maybe he wanted to attract the masses and it worked. I mean, that book has sold, I think it's 15 or 20 million copies worldwide. Uh, and there's many biblical, biblical principles there, but he doesn't mention the word God, whereas this, this book does. So anyways, that's my only pet peeve on that. Uh, so I think it's important to bring the, bring the glory back to God. Well, two, two more things he said. Um, one was when we judge people, don't judge them by their circumstance at that moment, that picture, right? We are a movie in the making. We have different stories. We have different plots. We have different scenes, right? So, so don't judge a person by a static picture that you may have of them. Judge them by the whole movie. If you're going to judge them, ask God, your, what's your role? How are you going to be part of their movie? To ask God to do something in their life through you. If you're going to judge them, let's say they're going through a setback, right? And maybe they need a little encouragement. They need a little reminder of Romans 8.28. They don't quite own this verse yet. And as a result, they're experiencing anxiety and depression and sadness and all these negative feelings that you will experience unless you own this verse and you already know that Jesus won it for us, right? And all things are gonna, are gonna work for our favor because we love him and we're putting in our two cents and we're doing our part. And so we deserve, I mean, it's a promise. It's, it's, it's a promise, right? God gave us the recipe already. It's a promise. It's not, if you do this, ah, maybe I'll bless you. No, it's, there's many promises throughout the Bible and this is one of them, right? And it's like a law, it's if then, right? If this happens, cause and effect. This is that causality. This is what causes it all. And the effect is the blessing, but this is what causes it, is our faith in this verse, owning this verse to our bones and realizing that all things are gonna work out for our good if we love him, if we love him. So let's start loving him, which is not hard to do. <laughs> all we gotta do is be grateful for our own lives and we immediately start to love him. I mean, when I look at my kids and my wife in this house, you know, all, all our possessions, right? And he's allowing all these things to happen to us. So you can't help but love him. And, 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 
you know, fall in gratitude. It's, oh, man, thank you for these blessings, right? And let me let me get to know you better, God. What promises do you have for me, right? So he's already won. He just wants to get closer to him because at the end of the day, it's all about a relationship. He wants this. He wants our heart, our mind. He Because he wants a relationship. He wants to know us. Okay, so he did say that about judging. So what part are you going to play? So do something in their life. So ask God, hey, I'm God. So they need encouragement. <laughs> Use me to encourage them. So work through me, God, and allow me to encourage this person and go and encourage them, right? We should be powerful enough if we are really getting to our word every day, we should have the power to encourage that person and remind them of this verse or whatever else they need. If they need if they need uh, resources, we should be resourceful. You know, there's there's no reason why we shouldn't have money to give. We shouldn't have time to give. We shouldn't have, you can't give away what you don't have, right? So we, sh we, sh we should be blessed. As, as Christians studying this stuff, studying the word, I mean, this is the reason why we're doing follow-up Wednesdays, because we should be blessed in every area of our lives, with financially, mentally, in our health, in our marriages, with friends, family, in our careers. We should be blessed and we should expect those blessings, which brings me to the last point. He said that invitation brings expectations. If we invite God into our lives, we expect him to move into our lives, right? But to invite him into our lives means to get to know him. So let's start again. It goes back in, it goes back into getting into a word. So let's get into our word. Let's start studying these verses, starting with this one. Uh, Romans 8, 28 is the one we're studying right now, but let's study the whole, uh, uh, the whole thing, the whole chapter. And lastly, he said that our tongue um, is where life and death resides. And it's so true. What we say is the beginning of creation. We decide with our tongue where we're going to take this conversation, this relationship, this moment right? Based on our tongue. So we have the power in our tongue. So what's behind our tongue? And that is our thoughts. Actually behind our tongue will be our beliefs. And what's behind our beliefs is our thoughts. So we got to fix our thoughts in God. And that is why we, th that shouldn't be hard because we love him and we seek him every day. Lastly, he says, since we choose life, obviously, if we want something from God, we have to exclaim and we have to say it. This was a very powerful message. Uh, again, to summarize real quick, uh, Romans 8, 28, all things, and we have to do our part, love him, bring glory to God, use our setbacks as setups, and lastly, the tongue. They command life and death. That's it for this episode of Follow Up Wednesday.